Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how Ford's new material use within their batteries is going to fundamentally shake everything up within the electric car world. Before we get into the video, though, as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. With that being said, let's get right into it. So first, let's talk batteries. Now, Ford is currently using nickel cobalt manganese battery packs in their electric vehicles. They're gonna be moving from that to lithium iron phosphate cells. Now, all that you really need to know about this new battery pack technology is that it is more reliable than what Ford's currently using. It is going to have just a longer lifespan overall. It's also gonna have less range loss over the course of its lifespan compared to the battery packs they're using right now. And it's going to cost anywhere from 10 to 15% less than the battery packs that they're using now. So basically, what Ford is going to be diving into is battery technology that costs less, it's more reliable, and it is going to just last longer compared to what they have right now. So like literally winning on all fronts. Now with this new battery technology, what Ford wants to do is ramp up their EV production by a massive amount. Their goal right now by the end of next year is to produce 600,000 electric vehicles. Now the breakup of that is going to be mostly Mustang Mach-E's 270,000 to be exact. 150,000 F-150 Lightnings, 150,000 Transit EVs, and they're going to be releasing another new fully electric SUV. They're gonna build about 30,000 of those next year, but that's actually for the European market, not for the North American market that, well, most of you that are watching this video live within. And those are massive numbers because right now Tesla is producing right around almost a million cars per year. So this is basically putting four right up you know not exactly where Tesla is but pretty dang close and Ford's benchmark in the next few years is going to be 2 million electric vehicles by 2026 to be exact and so that is just a massive amount of vehicles from a production standpoint and then something that I do want to mention on top of this is this is not Ford getting rid of their internal combustion engine cars this is Ford still continuing to build those vehicles alongside these electric vehicles and so Ford is obviously going to be expanding in the electric vehicle field but they're still going to be building their regular internal combustion engine cars and so they are going to absolutely dominate both markets because of this kind of like two-pronged offense. Now we have to talk about what this actually means for the broader automotive market and then also for the electric car market as well. Let's talk about the electric car market and then we'll dive into the broader auto market. So first off, talking about the electric car market, this is going to light a massive fire underneath Tesla in terms of them having to drastically improve things from a quality standpoint and from a production standpoint, frankly, to be able to fight against Ford. And this is something that I knew would eventually happen, right? A legacy automaker using their current infrastructure to ramp things up a massive amount and basically surpass all of these new tech companies like Tesla. Right now, Tesla is right around a million cars a year, roughly in terms of production worldwide. So Tesla still, uh, in terms of what they're going to produce next year, will surely be more than what Ford will produce at their 600,000 uh, electric vehicle mark. But this is a heck of a lot closer than what Ford was in previous years and pretty much any other automaker was in previous years. So again, it's just, it's a really important shift in the market. And so what I think this means is that manufacturers like Tesla are just going to have to really improve their quality. And when I say manufacturers like Tesla, I'm talking about these new tech companies that are coming up, Tesla, Rivian, uh, you also have Lucid as well. They're going to have to make sure that their quality is there and that they're going to continue to be able to ramp up production to keep up with uh, demand and just what people will expect out of EVs. The Ford Mustang Mach-E has perfectly proven this because the Ford Mustang Mach-E is not only affordable, but it actually is very competitive with the Tesla that it competes against, which is the Tesla Model Y. It has a crazy performance version that competes with the Tesla Model Y performance. It also has a long range version as well. It's got really cool looks. It's got really good build quality, a nice interior. And 
And despite the fact that Ford doesn't have Tesla's charging network, Tesla's already been kind of opening up their charging network. There's charging adapters as well where you can basically use Tesla's charging network. And so the whole thing that Tesla had that basically gave them a monopoly in the electric car world here in the US, the charging network, is slowly being eroded because of all of these changes that are happening. And so again, the only way for Tesla now to keep up is improve build quality and just frankly build more exciting cars. Yes, Tesla's cars are extremely quick and they're always on the cutting edge of acceleration, but they're no longer on the cutting edge of range and build quality, frankly, because if you look at range, Lucid is on the cutting edge of range. They have cars that now have over 500 miles of driving range. And then if you look at quality, the best quality I have seen so far has been Lucid, and has been Ford in terms of electric vehicles that I have driven where I've driven full production units. On Lucid side of things, well, hopefully quality is good because it's a very expensive car, but on Ford's side of things, Ford's been building cars for such a long time that, well, they know how to build cars and you can tell that. Go into a Ford Mustang Mach-E or an F-150 Lightning and you'll see a very well-built vehicle. Like, you're not gonna see crazy panel gaps things are actually going to work that are supposed to work, you know, unlike what you see with Tesla's. And Tesla has improved a massive amount over the last few years, but they still have quite a bit of work to be done. So ultimately what this is going to do for the electric vehicle world is it's going to really shake things up because now we have big money being invested from a massive player in the automotive world. This isn't some small tech startup, right? This is Ford we're talking about, right? This is like the biggest automaker on the planet. And so, yeah, things are really going to change in the electric world. And it's going to be really good for us consumers because this extra competition means that we're going to get better electric vehicles with more range, better build quality, and we're going to have a better charging network overall. And so we're basically winning. And this is also going to help keep prices down because there's going to be constant innovation like what Ford is doing with this new battery pack system to keep the cost down, to keep it, these vehicles competitive with the other automakers. Now, in terms of the broader auto industry, this is a push by a large automaker towards electric vehicles. Now, Ford obviously still has their branch, their legacy branch building internal combustion engine cars. That is going to continue, which I think is a absolute genius move because it means that Ford's gonna be able to capitalize on both markets at the same time. But again, Ford pushing more into EVs is gonna push other automakers into EVs as well. And we've already kind of seen that push, but like now with this news coming from Ford, this is gonna light a fire under Stellantis's butt and under GM's butt as well to seriously ramp up production and get more cars out there so that they can compete with Ford because frankly, they don't wanna get beat by Ford. Even though Stellantis is not technically owned by an American company, anymore, right? The brands under them, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, and Chrysler, that you know ultimately started out as American brands, still don't want to lose here in America. So we're going to see a lot of com competition between legacy automakers because of this shift, which I think is a good thing. Because again, what it's going to do is it's going to give us just better cars overall from an EV perspective. But I also think it's going to continue uh, giving us really good cars from an internal combustion engine standpoint perspective, because there's a lot of people that still want to buy those cars because they're just not ready to jump into an EV. And so we're going to see just a lot of progress in that field. And so now let's sum things up by going over the money of this situation, which I think is very important. So I talked about earlier in this video how this battery pack is going to lower costs for Ford on their batteries by about 10 to 15%, which is a massive amount. And this is going to help Ford become even more profitable. That's what Ford has been focusing on the last little bit. And if you guys don't know, with electric vehicles through Ford's system, it's not really a normal transaction for dealerships because normal transactions for dealerships, basically they buy a car from Ford and then they sell it to a customer. And that's not always how it works, but it's most of the time how it works, right? Whereas with their EVs, people basically are ordering it from Ford and then the dealership is facilitating the rest of the deal. And because it's built out this way, dealerships don't actually make any money on the cars themselves. So in a normal car transaction, you have like invoice and then you have MSRP and there's usually a difference between those two numbers. With these electric vehicles from Ford, there is no difference. And sometimes the invoice is higher than the MSRP. So dealerships are technically quote unquote losing money when they sell electric vehicles with Ford. And so basically dealerships have to give the customer a really good experience in terms of their buying experience with these electric vehicles and that's how they'll get paid from Ford. 
So the reason I'm talking about this is because Ford is reducing costs on different things with their vehicles, this is gonna help them reduce costs even more overall on the vehicle itself, which should make these luxury vehicles more affordable for us regular people. And it should make it so that they can increase the incentives for dealerships so that dealerships will be better at taking care of customers. And again, everything that I just mentioned is kind of like a slightly rose tinted uh, glasses look at the whole situation. Obviously, there's still a lot that has to happen for Ford to be able to implement this, but I would say in the uh, stock form of saying things that I'm pretty bullish on the whole thing and I'm pretty bullish on Ford as well. And so I, I think this implementation of this new battery technology is great and I think it's really gonna shake things up. And I think that the route that Ford is going with basically making it so dealerships aren't making any profit on the vehicle and they only make money if they take care of the customer is the route to go and so overall it, it it's looking like it's a really positive situation and so i want you guys to let me know what you think about this battery technology and also this business model that ford is going into where they're still using dealerships but they're kind of pushing dealerships into a direction where it's all customer experience based rather than being based on you know profits and negotiation and all of that fun well not exactly fun stuff but anyways that's gonna sum things up for today's video i will see all of you in that next video